Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. Thank you very much. This is uh, amazing. I did not know that. I knew I was doing well, but I did not know that. And I've been a member for a long time, and my boys are members, and they're much better shooters than I am. I'll tell you, they know more about guns than any. I don't know, there might be two or three people in this room, but believe it or not, not many. So to get the endorsement, believe me, is a fantastic honor. And And I just said to Wayne, and I just said to Chris, I will not let you down. Remember that. I will not let you down. And, you know, I wrote a few remarks, and I'm going to actually read them because we go into a little detail. But I will tell you that Hillary Clinton, and, you know, I call her crooked Hillary because all you have to do is read any newspaper you want. But Hillary Clinton wants to abolish the Second Amendment. Just remember that. We're not talking about changing. She wants to abolish the Second Amendment. So we're not going to let that happen. I can tell you that right now. We're going to preserve it. We're going to cherish it. We're going to take care of it, okay? You know, they keep chipping away. They talk about the magazines. They talk about the bullets. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take care of it. You know, um, a couple of things before I give you some more detailed remarks. I, I feel... Uh, really happy with what's going on. You know, the Fox poll came out three days ago, and in the Fox poll, I'm leading Hillary, 41 to 44. 44. And last night, Rasmussen, which is a highly respected poll, came out. Trump, 42. Crooked Hillary Clinton, 37. So we're doing well. Now, with all that, we have a long way to go. But if you get every one of your friends to go vote, because there's a big difference. You know, on a lot of the things, there's a difference. And some are subtle, some are big. And by the way, we're in Kentucky. We're going to put the miners back to work before I forget about that. We're going to put the miners. We just left. And, and I also won Kentucky, so I love Kentucky. I used to work in Cincinnati for two summers. I worked in Cincinnati doing a job with my father. And I loved, I loved Cincinnati, and I'd come over the line, and I'd be in Kentucky. You wouldn't be, you'd be surprised how much I know about Kentucky. But uh, it's, it's an amazing place. But I said when I won New York, because we won New York in a landslide, and then Pennsylvania and Maryland, and we won everything. We were winning everything. Uh, we won Connecticut, Delaware, Rhode Island. And then we went to West Virginia, and boy, did I win. Did we do well in West Virginia? Wow. But all landslides, we won in all of the states I mentioned and more, every single county in every single state. That's called a victory. And we won by massive percentages in the 60s and some in the 70s. And then, of course, we went to Indiana. As you know, that was going to be, that was going to be the firewall for the other side. And it turned out to be a massive victory for us again. It didn't hurt that Bobby Knight came out and said, I want Trump to win. That didn't hurt. If, if you're in Indiana and Bobby Knight endorses you, that's an, I guess that's about as good as it gets. So I just want to say that I've been watching what's going on, and I've been looking at airplanes getting blown up in the air and lots of bad things happening. It's just not the same. And we're going to bring it back, and we're going to bring it back to a real place where we don't have to be so frightened, where we don't have to be so afraid. And you know what's happening in the schools, and you know what's happening everywhere. We're going to bring it back, and you folks are going to be so happy, and you're going to be so proud of your country again. Just remember. <laughs> Bernie Sanders, who I'm sure you all love, he did say one thing that was very interesting. He said that Hillary Clinton is unqualified to be the President of the United States. And he said, 
that. And it's, it's just, you know, one of those things. He said she suffers from bad judgment, and she does. You look at so many of her decisions have been bad. So I think we're going to do really, really well, and I look forward to it. I actually look very forward to the debates. I've loved the debates. I don't know. I never debated before, and all of a sudden I have all these debates. And that was a big question mark in my mind. I mean, how will I do in debates? I'm debating people that were on their national debating teams and all of these top debaters. But they never had people interrupting them every other word. They'd say, you're a liar, you're a liar. And they're trying to speak and they can't speak. You would have done the same. I know a lot of the audience. You would have done the same. So I just want to give this, and I want to really, it's so important to me, I wrote it down. And again, my sons have been members of the NRA for many, many years, and they're incredible. They have so many rifles and so many guns, sometimes even I get a little bit concerned. I said, that's a lot, <laughs> okay? But I will tell you, they are, they know so much about it, and really, they're surrogates. They go around and speak, and every time they speak to a gun organization or a club, or the, people call me and they say, you boys are great boys, and boy, do they know their business. So. Uh, it's one of those things, and that's the way we want it. And, you know, I mention uh, so often we talk about Paris or we talk about San Bernardino, and nobody had guns. You know, Paris is probably in the world the toughest place to have a gun. The toughest. France generally, but Paris in particular. And when these thugs walked in, thugs, you know, the press used to call them masterminds, right? The mastermind. We're looking. I said, that's why people are joining. That's why they're coming in, because they're using the word mastermind. Not mastermind, thugs. In fact, I called him the guy with the dirty cap. Remember the white cap? And it was filthy dirty. This was the mastermind. And actually, the press has stopped using the term. They're very dishonest people, among the most dishonest I've ever met. But they actually stopped using the term mastermind because they use that term. And then they wonder why our youth is going and fighting for ISIS. They don't even know what they're fighting for. But I think it's gotten a lot better from that standpoint. But if you look at Paris, 130 people killed, hundreds of people still in the hospital, just horribly wounded, can never be the same, horribly wounded. And these guys came in, boom, boom, you over here, boom. And they just stood there and just shot everybody. No guns on the other side, folks. If you would have had guns on the other side, if I took a couple of these folks in here, some especially wearing the red caps, make America great again, I promise there wouldn't have been 130 people killed and hundreds of people lying in the hospital to this day. There might have, it might not have happened, because if they knew there were guns in the room, it might not have happened. But if it did, you would have had bullets going in the opposite direction. And believe me, the carnage would not have been the same by any stretch of the imagination. And I tell, thank you, I tell the same story on San Bernardino. Here's two people. I guess she radicalized him. Who knows? Who knows? It's a mess. We're in a mess, folks, a mess. Radical Islamic terrorism. We have a president, doesn't mention the words, doesn't want to talk about it. And if you don't want to talk about it, you're never going to solve a very big problem. And we're talking a worldwide problem. We're not talking here. We're not talking Kentucky. We're talking all over the world this is a problem. And we have a president doesn't want to mention the name. You have San Bernardino, 14 people. They worked with these two. They worked with them. They gave them a baby shower. They had a baby. The people they worked with gave them a baby shower. They walked in. No guns on the other side. They had the guns, and they killed 14 people, many wounded, many in the hospital to this day. But they wounded many. But they killed 14 of their co-workers. And the co-workers thought they were friends. So there's something going on. Now, I tell you again, same story. If we had guns on the other side, it wouldn't have been that way. I would have, boom. If we had guns on the other side, it wouldn't have been that way. And then you have the gun-free zones. The gun-free zones, that's real. We had a case, you know, the, about a year and a half ago was the first I really heard of this. And where you had the five military people, great people. One was a master marksman, a master with anything he touched having to do with guns, weapons, anything he touched. And they were told, this is on a military base, folks, on a military base. They were told, put your guns away, got to put your guns. These are, you know, soldiers. These are people that are representing us. 
These are the top of the line. These were five great, brave, incredible soldiers. Put your guns away. So their guns are locked up, put in a different area of the place. And this whack job walks in and starts shooting them, killed all five of them. Gun-free zones. We're getting rid of gun-free zones, okay? I can tell you. We're getting rid of them. Thank you. Thank you. That wasn't part of my speech. I must be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't read you what I have here. But in fact, if I would have known teleprompters, I would have used them. I've started to use them a little bit. They're not bad. You never get yourself in trouble when you use a teleprompter. You know, the problem is it's too easy. We have a president who uses teleprompters. It's too easy. We should have non-teleprompter speeches only when you're running for president. You find out about people. The other way, you don't find out about anybody. So, the Second Amendment is under a threat like never before. Crooked Hillary Clinton is the most anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment candidate ever to run for office. And as I said before, she wants to abolish the Second Amendment. She wants to take your guns away. She wants to abolish. Just remember that. The NRA and the late hero, and he was a great guy, Charlton Heston, who many of you knew. I met him a few times. He was an incredible guy. Did battle with the Clintons to protect our Second Amendment. The NRA has led the fight time and time again to protect our fundamental freedoms. This is an amazing group. I'll tell you, Chris and Wayne and all of the people, and I've gotten to know a lot of these are incredible people, and they really believe this isn't like a job. They really, really believe. And we're all lucky to have people like that, I will tell you. Really lucky. Of course, if they didn't endorse me, maybe I wouldn't say that. I, I would. Hillary Clinton wants to reverse the Supreme Court decision, D.C. versus Heller, upholding the right to keep and bear arms. Hillary said the Supreme Court is wrong on the Second Amendment. That's bad. That's like what she said about the miners. We're going to put the miners and the mines out of business. Then she goes, right? Then she goes to, oh, boy, I'll tell you, West Virginia, how were they? I hate to say I won Kentucky, but I won West Virginia by even more. I really, but of course, she made that statement after I had already won Kentucky. We're going to win them all. We're going we're gonna to win them all. We're going to win them all. If Hillary gets to appoint her judges, and this is really important. Look, defense is number one. We have to protect our country. Defense, economy is important. Everything's important. But without defense, we don't have a country. And our military, as you know, it's being decapitated. What they're doing to our military is incredible. I saw over the weekend a, a documentary on our, you know, our, our great airmen. And these are people that are flying our jets, and they're running out of parts for our fighter jets. And these are fighter pilots. These are incredible men. And they're going to junkyards, plane graveyards, they call them, where the planes are. They're graveyards, where the old planes. And they're taking parts off. They're cannibalizing the planes. They're taking parts off the planes. And they're putting them onto the jets. And I'm saying, is this the United States? Why don't we have new equipment? And a man got up, great guy, looked as good or better than Tom Cruise. And you know what I'm talking about, because that was a great movie. And, and he said, you know what? I've been in this for 20 years, and it used to be so incredible. And now it's like a different world. The equipment, the way it's maintained, everything. It's like a different world. And I just have to say, just to interrupt what I'm going to be talking about, I have to say, we're going to make our military bigger and better and stronger than ever before. And nobody, nobody is going to push us around. Nobody. Nobody. Thank you. And by the way, as part of that, we are going to take care of our great veterans. And I have to tell you, the proper way, the proper way.
All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. If Hillary gets to appoint her judges, you know, one of the biggest and most important reasons to win this time, it's very unusual. Sometimes you get no judges to appoint. Sometimes you go for years and there's no judges. Probably there'll be a minimum. You have Scalia, who was one of the greats. Well, his position's up. Great. He was great. But you have Scalia, so you have one before you even start. Assuming, and I'm sure that Mitch and the guys are going to be able to hold out, I have no doubt about it, because we don't want anybody taking that slot. But you have Scalia, and you'll probably have three. It could be four. And it could even be five judges. So I think in terms of president, and we're talking about a four-year period. And of course, we intend to be there for eight years. But we'll make it so good in four, you'll probably say you don't need to do it any longer, Mr. President. But, but I, I can't stress in any stronger fashion, whoever the next president is going to appoint from three to five judges. And if it's Hillary or whoever, assuming she's allowed to run, because you know what? What she did with her emails is so criminal, is so dishonest, is so shocking that she shouldn't be allowed to run, but it looks like they're going to let her run. And that's okay with me, because really, I do want to run against her. I have to be honest with you. So if she gets to appoint her judges, she will, as part of it, abolish the Second Amendment. And I have to say, uh, that would be, in my opinion, that's what she's going to go for. And it's a little like she did with the coal miners. She said about, you know, she's going to put the coal miners, she's going to put the mines out of business. Then she went to West Virginia, and she said, oh, well, I tried to retract. You know, she tried to retract. It didn't work out too well for her. She got really beaten badly. Hillary wants to disarm vulnerable Americans in high-crime neighborhoods. Whether it's a young single mom in a Florida or a grandmother in Ohio, Hillary wants them to be defenseless, wants to take away any chance they have of survival. And by the way, you have men and you have women sitting in an apartment, and outside is tremendous crime, tremendous crime of all kinds, and they need to be protected. And you know the only way they're going to be able to protect themselves. And if you take that gun away from them, it's going to be a very unfair situation. And that's why we're going to call her heartless Hillary. We can do without that. I'd ra I like. Somehow, I like crooked Hillary better. <laughs> I put forth, and you probably saw it a few days ago, I put forth a list of judges who will protect and defend all of our freedoms, including the Second Amendment. The judges will follow the Constitution, and these were all highly vetted, the Federalist Society, Heritage, some great references from Jeff Sessions, a fantastic man from Mitch and from a whole group of people. And we put down 11. I'll be adding some additional names over a period of the next month or so, sometime prior to the convention. Hope you can all go to the convention. Hope you can come. And we're going to be putting some uh, additional names in. I think you'll be very happy with them. But it's, got, it's been reviewed incredibly well. People love these people. And I thought I'd do that because I really think it brings the party together. It really is going to, I mean, the effect it's had is incredible. Because they weren't sure, will Trump appoint this one, that one? How will the judges be? Such an important thing. So I put together the list with some incredibly important organizations and highly respected. And everybody's really happy. You've seen we've gotten A-plus reviews on that. Uh, now, I'd like to call for Hillary Clinton to put together a list also, okay? <laughs> Let her put together a list, because I'd like to see what that list consists of. And you will see, it's day and night, okay? Day and night. And it will not be good for the people in this room. And it won't be good, by the way, for the people of our country, most importantly. So, Americans use guns to defend themselves against violent crime more than a million times a year, okay? More than a million times a year. And they want to take them away. Heartless hypocrites like the Clintons want to take this and they want to get rid of guns, and yet they have bodyguards that have guns. So I think that in addition to calling for them to name judges, we'll also call them and let their bodyguards immediately disarm. Okay? No, they should immediately disarm. 
And let's see how good they do. Let's see how they feel walking around without their guns on their bodyguards. In the meantime, nobody else can have the guns, right? President Obama tried to take the guns from law-abiding Americans, but has reduced prosecutions of violent criminals who use guns. President Obama is even releasing violent criminals from the jails, including drug dealers and those with gun crimes. And they're being let go by the thousands, by the thousands. Many of these are also, I'm sure you're not going to be surprised to hear this, illegal immigrants. President Obama pushed for changes to sentencing laws that release thousands of dangerous drug trafficking felons and gang members who prey on civilians. And I want to tell you, I've really learned a lot about the border. In fact, two weeks ago, you probably saw 16,500 Border Patrol agents endorsed Donald Trump. And we've gotten great endorsements. To have the endorsement from NRA today and to have the endorsement from the Border Patrol agents. And I was talking to them. These are incredible people that want to do their job. That's why they're endorsing me. They could just sort of, you know, they're told to stand back. Don't do it. They want to do their job. These are incredible people. It's the first time they've ever endorsed a presidential candidate and 16,500, so I'm really honored by that. This is Hillary Clinton's agenda, too, to release the violent criminals from jail. She wants them all released. She wants people released that you wouldn't want to walk on the street with, you wouldn't want to look at. And, you know, whether it's Kate in San Francisco, you see what happened there, or Jamil, I've become great friends with his father. Jamil was shot in the face three times by somebody that wasn't supposed to be here. Or, and I always say this because this was tragic, a 65-year-old veteran, a woman who was a great woman, raped, sodomized, and killed by an illegal immigrant, wasn't supposed to be here. We're going to straighten it out. And by the way, this doesn't have to do with guns, per se, but maybe it has to do with a lot of other things. We're going to build the wall. It's going to be a great wall. We're going to have borders again. People are going to come into the country, but they're coming into the country legally, folks. They're coming in legally. We're going to keep our borders open, and I'll tell you, but they're going to be open when people come in legally. Now, Hillary wants to just keep them open. Anybody can come across, and that's what's been happening. And the crime is violent and a lot. And lots of other things are happening with the drugs pouring across. So. She's putting the most vulnerable Americans in jeopardy, and this is a risk that we can no longer afford. We've had enough. I think we've had enough. Wouldn't you say we've had, like... <laughs> in trying to overturn the Second Amendment, Hillary Clinton is telling everyone and every woman living in a dangerous community that she doesn't have the right to defend herself. So you have a woman living in a community, a rough community, a bad community, sorry, you can't defend yourself. That is so unfair, and that is so egregious. And I'll tell you what, my poll numbers with women are starting to go up. I never thought of it. This should really lift them up, right? <laughs> starting to go up. I will say, my poll numbers with men are through the roof. But I like women more than men. Come on, women, let's go. Come on. And most people know that about me. Most people know that. This is the most basic human right of all, but Hillary wants to strip it away and strip it away from women and all others. Hillary Clinton will release violent criminals from jail, more so than even Obama. She has a more open policy than Obama, if that's possible, and put innocent Americans at risk. I'm going to put criminals behind bars and guarantee that law-abiding Americans have the right to self-defense, 100 percent. Thank you. Thank you. There are 13 million right-to-carry permit holders in the United States. I happen to be one of them. In the past, nobody knows that. Boy, would I surprise somebody if they hit Trump. If, if, I wasn't, if I wasn't surrounded by, like, 
the largest group of Secret Service people, who, by the way, are fantastic people, and our police are fantastic, fantastic people. We have to give a standing ovation to our police. We have to. They are fantastic people. Amazing. They do such a great job. They are so unfairly treated. But they know, and they know how the people feel about them. Thank you. That's great. In the past 30 years, the number of right-to-carry states has gone up sevenfold. These are among the most law-abiding folks statistically in the entire country. So they have the right to carry. They're among the most like, you know, they do statistics on everything, right? Everything. And these are among the most like, in fact, they're like at the top of the list. In Florida, for example, they've issued more than 3 million concealed carry permits in the past 30 years. Only 168 have been revoked. That's 0.006%. So very, very few and just no difficulty. Hillary wants to go into the opposite direction. She said that President Obama didn't go far enough when he executed this order, when he signed this order, and he's not going far enough. He's gone so far, he's gone too far, we're going to stop it. And we will unsign lots of different things, including some of those terrible executive orders. Believe me, they're going to be unsigned so fast. They'll be unsigned the first hour that I'm in office, in the first hour that I'm in office. Hillary's pledge to issue new anti-gun executive orders. You know that. This is the behavior, I mean, you could say of a dictator. This is the behavior of somebody, frankly, I think, that doesn't know what she's doing. She's not equipped to be president in so many different ways. But this is the thinking of a person that is not equipped to be the president of the United States. Believe me, she doesn't understand it. Bad judgment. We talk about it. She's got bad judgment. You know where it came from. Came from me. It also came from his current, her current opponent, who's doing pretty well. I'll tell you. You talk about a rigged system. He wins every week and he keeps losing. I think Bernie should run as an independent. Okay, let him run. I do. I would love him to run as an independent. Then it would be the three of us on stage. I love that. The Second Amendment is on the ballot in November. The only way to save our Second Amendment is to vote for a person that you all know named Donald Trump, okay? I will tell you. I will never let you down. I will protect our Second Amendment. I will protect our country. Our military will be strong. Our borders will be enforced. We'll get rid of Common Core, which is a disaster. We'll bring will bring education local. So important. Our education is a mess. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to have a great, great plan as a substitute. Obamacare is out of control. The new costs, as you know, they're going to be revealed on November 1st. They are going to be through the roof. And by the way, don't let this happen. We'll have to speak to Mitch. Obama is trying to get it delayed till after the election. The new course will be revealed on November 1st, unless he gets it changed, and we don't want that to happen. They will be so astronomical, and it'll show what a total failure and disaster Obamacare is. We will repeal it, and we will replace it with something great, okay? Believe me. We're going to have strong borders, and we're going to make the greatest trade deals, every country worldwide, every country in the world is ripping off our great country like we're children, like taking candy from a baby. Our trade deals will be renegotiated. We won't be having trade deficits of $500 billion a year with China anymore, folks. They won't be taking our jobs out of here and Kentucky and lots of other places, every place. 
They won't be taking our jobs and bringing them into Mexico, like with Nabisco, where they leave Chicago, moving to Mexico, and so many other countries, car companies, Carrier. You take a look at Carrier Air Conditioner, just left Indiana. They're leaving Indiana. They're moving to Mexico. That's not happening with me. Because when they make their air conditioners and they sell them across our now very strong border, believe me, they're going to pay a tax and they're going to say, we're not moving to Mexico anymore. It's so simple. It's so simple. So we're going to have... We're going to have great trade agreements. We're going to become a strong nation again. We're going to save our Social Security. We're going to save our Medicare. We're going to be so proud of this country. You're going to be proud of your president, but I don't care about that. You're going to be proud of your country again. And we're going to start winning again, because we don't win anymore. We never win. We don't win on trade. We don't win with the military. We can't beat ISIS. Believe me, we're going to knock the hell out of ISIS. We have no choice. We're going to knock the hell out of ISIS. So, we are going to start winning again. And I have fun saying it, and I say it a lot, but there's nothing better. And some of you have heard it. But we are going to win, win, win. We're going to win with military. We're going to win at the borders. We're going to win with trade. We're going to win at everything. And some of you are friends. And you're going to call. You're going to say, Mr. President, please, we can't take it anymore. We can't win anymore like this. Mr. President, you're driving us crazy. You're winning too much. Please, Mr. President, not so much. And I'm going to say, I'm sorry. We're going to keep winning because we are going to make America great again. Thank you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kentucky. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.